All right, welcome back. It's so great, of course, to see you again today. It is hot. It is sweltering hot outside today. So rather than being outdoors, we're going to be talking about beginner photography tips. Eight items, guys, you need when you're getting started. Now, when you get started, there's tons of gear you can get for your photography. You want to try to avoid getting gas. And no, guys, I'm not talking about the stuff you pump into your car or what comes after eating two cans of bush baked beans. Mm. Guys, I'm talking about gear acquisition syndrome, gas. Gas costs you a ton of money and usually ticks off your spouse as well. Instead, let's focus on getting the things that you actually need to take better photos, not all the gear that you want. Usually what you need and what you want, they're two different things. Now the first item on the list is a nifty 50, a 50 millimeter lens, just like this one. A 50 millimeter 1.8 lens are hugely versatile. You know, most common apertures are 1.8, 1.4, 1.2. For reference of this video, I'm going to be talking about and referring to the 1.8 now. These are great for landscapes, portraits, street photography, even down a video they're great for. I even know some people that will reverse mount this lens and use it for macro. One of the benefits behind this lens is small and lightweight. This is great for running and gunning. They're sharp. They're much more than the kit lenses that you'll often get. And they're also fast. Did I mention it has a 1.8 aperture, which of course lets in a tremendous amount of light. So they're great for low light shooting. That big aperture means shallow depth of field so that those portraits, excuse me, are gonna have nice blurry backgrounds. And best of all, these things are inexpensive. So whether you're shooting a Canon, Nikon, Sony shooter, or whatever other brand, you can find a very inexpensive 50 millimeter 1.8. For example, a Nikon uh, 1.8, you can pick up for about 196 bucks. Canon 1.8 is about 125 bucks. The Sony, this little guy right here, is $248. The second item on the list is a tripod. And I know, tripods get overlooked by so many beginners as not being something that they need. And that is such a huge, huge mistake. They can be used for portraits, landscapes, and everything in between. The tripod provides a stable base which minimizes, guys, the camera shake and also helps improve that sharpness. It also forces you to slow down a bit and survey the scene for best angle and also point of view. It only takes a few seconds to, to set up a tripod and the benefit to this is it allows you to think about the composition and the framing and all those oh so good attributes that you are going to put into framing up that awesome shot. Now, one thing I'm going to say here, and I know the comment section are going to light up, but let me explain. Now, you don't want to be a cheap ass when it comes to tripods. I learned long ago that you need to max out your budget here. Cheap tripods wear out faster. Cheap, poorly made tripods are more prone to failure. The legs might fail. The locks uh, could disengage. It just simply poses more risk to your camera gear and your expensive lenses. Look for something, guys, that is sturdy, uh, stable, well-built, lightweight, and as portable as you can get it. And so you can get a great well-priced tripod from, for example, uh, Vanguard, three-legged thing, Colorado Tripod Company. And then, of course, there are more expensive options, such as from Pro Media Gear, Peak Design, and really right stuff, Get So. The third item on the list is a fast memory card. This is another area where spending just a little bit more gets you much better performance. A fast memory card is required for things like uh, burst shooting, video. You want a card that has lots of space for those large raw files, video footage. Uh, the camera files, guys, are just simply getting larger and larger. Uh, you want to look for something that has a fast read and also write speed. Now, the Read speed refers to how fast the data can be retrieved from the card, while the write speed refers to how fast the data can be saved to the card. The two brands that I've had good luck with over the years are SanDisk and Lexar. What I'll do guys is I'll put links down below that these are links to the cards that I've personally used myself and also would recommend. 
Okay, the fourth item to make the list is spare batteries. And guys, this just makes sense to have a battery backup or two or three or 12. <laughs> it's kind of a no-brainer here. Maybe 12 is a little bit high, but you get the point. When I go out, I have this, guys, I have this black bag, and I usually carry six to eight spare batteries with me. However, for clarity, let me give you a example. Imagine for a moment, you are a zillion miles from home and you're shooting a stunning, a gorgeous Milky Way scene. Guys, couldn't, the conditions couldn't be any better. Then you start noticing your battery meter doing something like this. Yikes, oh no. And you don't have any spare batteries. Extra batteries, simply put, is a good insurance policy that extends your shooting time. We know batteries run out and they can fail. Heck, you might even forget to charge one that you bring as an extra or you misplace it. Oh, <laughs> so bottom line, this allows you to shoot longer without worry of running out of juice, especially important if you're shooting videos as this drains the batteries as well. Now, mirrorless cameras have a pretty crummy battery life, though it is way better, a lot better, thank goodness, than what it was just a few years ago. The fifth item to make the list is a camera remote. And guys, this is about the cheapest camera accessory you can buy. You can even pick them up for less than 10 bucks for a simple infrared remote. Now, along with the tripod, this will help you get sharper images. This eliminates the possibility of camera shake from you pressing the shutter button down at the top. It's also handy for group photos, selfies, and so forth like that. But much better, than using the camera's self timer. Just simply put, because you can actually also move around as needed, trigger the shutter from wherever you want. They come in both cable releases and wireless options. All right, guys, the sixth item on this list is a good camera strap. Now, there are tons of options out there. You have shoulder straps, neck straps, wrist straps, uh, harnesses, slings, things that are mounted on your chest all over the place. Again, investing in a good strap from the outset will be the best option for you. Cheap straps can be uncomfortable, they're poorly made, they're not super functional. Personally, I like a sling strap, like the Peak Design Slide or the Slide Light. Actually, both of these can be worn as either a shoulder strap or as a neck strap, if you want. They both have kind of a padded webbing, which makes it super comfortable. They have a grippy side, which keeps it in place, so whether you're using it for a shoulder or a neck strap, and they have a high quality anchor connector, which means a solid connection between your camera and the strap itself. These are great straps without a huge price tag is actually the cool win with this. These are the exception to the rule with inexpensive straps. Most are crap, but Peak Design really knocked it out of the park with these. I also like Black Rapid as well. They make a really solid, good product. I don't own one, but I have used them before. Today I will often use a Holdfast Moneymaker Solo. What I like about this is it's made from a single piece of full grain leather. Guys, it's crazy, crazy comfortable. It has a huge shoulder pad to distribute the weight and the leather conforms to the unique shape of your body. You have belt anchors which keeps it in place. You can disengage the anchor with an easy one-handed kind of motion, which is really awesome. And, oh man, I love the looks of it as well. The metal hardware was designed by Holdfast specifically for this strap. It's like marine grade uh, stainless steel metal that they're using and it just won't rust. It actually looks really fantastic. But guys, this one, I gotta warn you, it's not cheap, that's for sure. Knowing what I know now about camera straps, yeah, I would have definitely picked up one of these earlier on in my photography career. But like tripods, investing in a high quality strap is a must as you develop as a photographer. All right guys, the seventh item, and we're gonna talk about editing software. Post-processing is not an optional exercise. It's a must too to get the best photos. And it doesn't necessarily need to be one of the big boys like Lightroom or Photoshop, although those are pretty awesome programs. Uh, there are a ton of inexpensive or even free options, like for example, GIMP. You have Luminar 3, Exposure X4. Taking the time to learn how to crop, straighten, and use the layers will pay huge dividends with image quality. It's all about enhancing your photos and bringing out the details in them. You want to strive to get things right right out of the camera and rely on post-processing for enhancement, not for fixing dumb mistakes. The eighth item on the list is camera and lens cleaning kits. Guys, no matter how hard you try to keep your glass and your camera sensor, or if you have a mirror in your DSLR, 
it, it, it's always going to get dirty. You know, smudges, dust, moisture, all of this degrades from the quality of your images. It's a drag, really, it is to, to sit there and just like in post-processing, cleaning up all the dust spots. Just keep your camera and your lenses clean. Can't stress the importance of this. Cleaning kits are dirt cheap and include tons of tools as well. You have microfiber cloths, lens wipes, blowers, and so forth. Routine cleaning will extend the life of your camera and lenses and might help avoid major issues cropping up that require professional fixes, which guys can be expensive. And there you guys go, eight items that will get you off to a good start. Now, if you enjoyed this video, found it to be helpful, be sure to like the video down below, hit the bell to be notified when we come out with new videos. And also, if you are not subscribed to the channel, guys, please subscribe, it does help. Until then, we're going to see you next time. So you guys get out there, and the biggest tip of all, get out there and practice. Practice as much as you can. Enjoy, guys.